at this time of the morning. You've got to see Damon. It's big. The lump on your head will be big if you wake him up. Quick, Gavin. Time's wasting. Candell. He's escaped. Candell did what? When? On the way north. There was some sort of an accident. The police car had taken Eddie. Anyhow, Candell's loose and he's got a gun. Now, knowing Eddie... Yeah, hold it. I'll be right down. What is it? What happened? Eddie Candell just escaped on his way to San Quentin. Since she's bound to show up here looking for you, and they can only send him to that gas chamber once. There's nothing Eddie would like better than take me along with him. Yeah, you and me and a few more of us. Frascati, get a hold of Dutch in Vegas fast. He'll want to say goodbye to Eddie, too. Where do you think you're going? I'm getting out of here. It's cold outside, baby. Back to bed. machine business must be more lucrative than meets the eye. This dapper young president of the International Vending Machine Corporation may have unearthed a gold mine under his big office building. Eddie. Linda, what are you doing here? Damon. He said I'd see something interesting. You will. And he's generous, as you can see, by the little shack he gave his girlfriend, Linda Marlowe. Wait, you haven't heard anything yet. Of course he owns a stable of thoroughbreds. All big shots got to own thoroughbreds, four-legged, two-legged, whatever. And speaking of thoroughbreds, how about his protege, Carla Angelo? Protege, he says. Now, now we come to the yacht. Every big shot needs a yacht. Remember what Morgan said, if you have to worry about the cost of a yacht, you can't afford one. See what that lousy publicity hound has done to us? Turn the spotlight on us. Now, remember what happened to that bunch at Appalachian. They got the spotlight turned on them. The law couldn't touch them, they thought. Where are they now? Deported. In jail. Well, it's not gonna happen here. I say from now on, Candell takes his vows alone. I say he's out. Do I hear anyone say no? Scotty? 
Devil up. Chicago. Get out of my chair. It's not yours anymore. Who says? The boys voted you out. <laughs> Too much publicity. That does it, Candell. You just walked yourself into the gas chamber. <laughs> Dr. Meeker, please. Gentlemen, I'm Dr. Meeker. Dr. Meeker? I'm Captain Davis, head of intelligence police. How do you do, sir? This is Lieutenant Fisher, the same department. Nice to know you. Dr. Meeker? Your phone call sounded extremely urgent, Doctor. It is urgent, gentlemen. I commend your promptness. Please, will you come with me? Probably no, gentlemen. We in this laboratory are experimenting with the mutation effects of atomic fallout on living matter. But before I confuse you with explanations, I'd like you to see some film. Will you please sit down? What are you trying to tell us, Dr. Meeker? Well, see the film first and then ask all the questions you wish. I'll try to answer them. All right. Now watch this carefully. This was recorded yesterday. The television cameras recording the, the actual test are elect 
electronically controlled at the test center at the station. Now, uh, that is 50 miles away from the bomb area. It's very interesting. Betty Cantel. Cantel! Yes, gentlemen, that's why you're here. Now, at this point, the camera is shut off to protect the lens. They'll reopen after the initial blast, and uh, there you are, you can see. But that's impossible! Come with me, gentlemen, and I'll try to explain. Now, to begin with, there's element X, uh, a new atomic element recently developed. Well, all I want to know is, why wasn't Candell killed in the blast, and could he still be alive? I'm coming to that. Now, we know that X would not explode with the force of uranium-235, but uh, could emit powerful mutation rays over a, a limited area. Yeah, but Eddie Candell... Please put these on. Please, if you will. Now, all of these plants that you see here were in the blast. They received the same amount of radiation that Candell received. Yet, all of these vegetables are alive and flourishing. Then Candell's alive, out there in the desert someplace. Well, I suppose he could be, but uh, it's not that simple. What do you mean by that? What do you think that is? Uh, looks like a vegetable of some kind. Uh, a pear, perhaps an apple. It's a watermelon. Before the blast, that was full size, 18 pounds. What do you think of that? What is it? Looks like a pear. As I told you, the X Factor in the bomb plays tricks, weird tricks. And uh, what do you think of that over there? What do you think it is? Watermelon? Well, it looks like a watermelon. It feels like a watermelon, but here. Don't eat it. What well, is a watermelon? Quite right. Hasn't altered in any way, has it? No. All right, turn it over. Now, cut a plug. side of the melon was in contact with a section of the steel tower. The melon absorbed that steel into its cell structure. Are you trying to tell me that Candell is part steel? That he's a man of steel? That same phenomena happened to Eddie Candell. The rays fused steel into the living tissues of the man. Living tissue with steel? But that's impossible. Impossible, gentlemen? <laughs> the dark side of the moon has been photographed. Natural laws and balances no longer exist. Eddie Candell is the first man on Earth to be exposed to cobalt element X. Potentially, he is now the most dangerous man alive, if he is not found.
his mother. Every mother's son. How many have you had? Not nearly enough. I suppose that proves something. Getting drunk won't solve anything. Does anything solve anything? Honey? Honey, haven't I... haven't I always done everything you wanted me to do? Hmm? Isn't that enough? Honey? Sure, you've done everything I've asked. Why? Because you knew Eddie was washed up, that's why. Well, I did help, didn't I? I... I lied at Eddie's trial. I, I hope got him convicted. Oh, don't you owe me something for that? Sure. You'll be taken care of. But I don't want anything. I just want to get out of here before Eddie comes. Please, honey. Please. Go on back to your room. Go on to bed. Go on. You got away. Bad news travels fast, doesn't it? I wanted to help you, Ed. You did. You helped me in court. Right into the gas chamber, you thought. Oh. No, they, they made me any Damon and the others. And you'll tell that to the right people, to the judge and the DA. You try anything. You try anything you say. I'll, I'll tell them how Damon made, made me and set you up. What are you whispering for? Got a welcoming committee in the house? No, I just swear. Funny how dames like you always run to a bedroom. Thinking of taking a powder? No, no Eddie. I, I just thought... Thought I'd catch up with you, huh? That's right. To the DA, you and Damon. Don't look at me like that, please. Where is he? Damon, I don't know. He... Didn't take him long to move in, did it? Where is he? Where is he? I'll take you to him, Eddie. I swear I'll take you to him. I swear I'll confess him. I'll tell the DA that Damon framed you. You're covered, Eddie. Looks like a board of directors meeting. Going to elect a new president? And we already have. We're going to retire the old one. I 
I'm not retiring yet, Damon. Too much unfinished business, like how I was framed. Yes, Damon. There'll be a lot of red faces when you confess the truth. Goodbye, Eddie. <laughs> That's Jones. Hold it. Who are you? With the butler. I telephoned you. Yeah, can they do that? Yes, sir. And Miss Marlowe. Mr. Candell took her with him. Our radio headquarters. I'll telephone the state police and highway patrol. Give me a police headquarters. They shoot to kill this time. Captain, please. You mustn't kill Eddie Candell. Now, look, Doctor, this is police business. But we must understand what's happening to this man. Why he lived through such intense radiation. Uh, how others can survive. Dr. Meeker, the police aren't killers. If it's possible to take them alive, they will. I'll give you communications. Two full days. What do you mean by that? Just thinking, what's happening in Candell's body? The fallout ray is still working, changing his cell structure. The steel working deeper and deeper, uh, moving towards his heart, his lungs, his brain. Lieutenant Fisher, nothing yet, huh? Two full days and 2,000 policemen. No luck yet, Dr. Meeker. Looks like our man has disappeared. It's time, time. Those bullets absorbed by his changing cell structure, soaked up like, like water in a sponge. The more of steel in his body, the, the worse his condition may become, the more uncontrollable. Do you mean to tell me that even if he kills Damon, he still might go ahead and... Turn that urge to kill on something else. Someone. Everyone.
Eddie. Put out the light and open the door. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, oh, Eddie. Yeah? Yeah, good. You'll get back to the house just in case. What's up, Pete? Kendall's gone back to Carla's house. You got the ball now, Bill. Don't fumble it. What happened to you? Burned. I'll be okay in a couple of days. Damon's got to talk. Oh, come on. Sit down. Something happened. Something I'm afraid to think about. Uh, they shot me. They they shot me, but they couldn't kill me. Why? Why couldn't they kill me? Oh, Eddie, I, I think you're just tired. Sometimes when we're very tired, we imagine things. No. No, look at my clothes. Look, look where the bullets tore. Let's get it off. We've got to get help. Drink. I haven't any in the house. Everything will be all right. Your hand. So warm. How about a cup of tea? Please, please. Don't go. All right. Okay. It's a minute now. Too quick. Who is it? It's 
The police. Lieutenant Fisher. Let me in. Careful. What do you want? It's about Eddie. Eddie? What about Eddie? Well, look. Let me inside, and I'll try to tell you. Well, I'm, I'm not dressed. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, get dressed, and I'll tell you all I can in the car. Car? We're placing you under protective custody. You're going to have to leave the house for a couple of days until we capture Kendall. But I can't. I'm sorry, Miss Angelo. Just pack a bag and I'll wait. Now what do we do? Go with him. Don't come back. You understand? What about you? You can't stay here. It isn't safe. They'll be coming back. Wait a minute. Key in the address of Mrs. Ganton's house. She's away on vacation. You'll be safe there for a few days. Look, while I'm getting dressed, you better go through the back way. They'll be coming back, I'm sure. Goodbye, darling. Be careful. Take your car. Hey, where are you taking me? To a hotel until this blows over. Get in. I didn't think it was a good idea for you to be up here by yourself. You needn't have worried. Maybe not. Carla, I think there's a few things you should know about Eddie. About what happened to him in that blast. He's alive. That's all I... That's all I need to know. You mean that's all you care to know? Yes. Yes, perhaps that's what I mean. You're in love with him, aren't you? That's so terrible. Not if he's worth loving. You don't think he is, do you? No. You think he's a killer and that he's guilty. I know he's not. Kendall, you haven't got a chance. Get out with your hands up. You, you knew Eddie was in that house. You got me out of there just so you could kill him. We're giving him more chance than he gave the others. Chance? You call this a chance? Look, Miss Angelo, Eddie's a knight in armor to you, chased by a bunch of dragons who look like policemen. But to me, he's nothing more than a tough, ruthless man who rose to be top dog in the jungle. Maybe he didn't kill a man. Maybe he was framed by Demon. But that's Eddie's world, Demon's world. Dirty deals. Dirty people. Get out, Kendall. Get out or we'll open fire. I'm sitting on a load of dynamite. Get back or I'll blow us all to hell. You can't win, Kendall. Get out of that truck. Shoot any time you want. I'm coming through. Clear the way. Open up. Let him throw. Don't follow me or I'll blow this over the center of town!
just one more baby. No more, honey. I've had enough. Oh, don't be mean, baby. Mr. Green? I said blow, baby, blow. Come on. You had to get nosy, didn't you? Mr. Damon, I think you and your friends better leave. Maybe you don't know it, but you're working for me, so you better keep your trap shut. Candell shows. What makes you think he's going to show? Linda, she's got instructions. He'll show, all right? I think you gentlemen will be happier someplace else. We're staying right here. Devlin, get on the phone. Don't let anybody in or out of this place. The house is a sellout, get it? Hey, you too. Come here. <laughs> There's your answer. Looks if he can sprout wings. Yeah, I see what you mean. Push him out the window. Even though he can eat bullets, I'll guarantee you he won't get up and walk away from the street. Not with this around his neck. That's your job. You stay behind the door and back him up, and you answer the door when he comes. Damon made me do it, and you know how he is. You believe me, don't you, honey? I love you. I've been planning this for a long time. You and me and Damon. Sure, honey, anything you say, anything at all. I'm, I'm thirsty, Eddie. Later. Right now, I'm interested in finding Damon. But, but he never told me anything. He didn't trust me. He, he knew I was your girl. You know where he lives in town? You know that, don't you? He was staying. Come on. Where's Damon? Eddie, I want to help you. Honey. Honey, I've been so lonely without you. You Eddie, I don't blame you for being angry. You've got, you've got reason to be. But can't you forget for just a little while? Oh, honey, just a little while. Can't, can't things be like they were? You haven't forgotten, have you? First, you take off my slipper, remember? Yeah, I remember. Not like that, Eddie. He used to... He used to do it sweetly, like it meant something to you. That's all over, Linda. I don't know how I am, but I'm not the same. Not the same inside anymore. Don't say that. You are the same. I can make you the same. Make me the same. A man... Honey. Just give me a chance, that's all I have. Now go ahead.
fantástico. Quiet. I don't know how I am, but I'm not the same anymore. You are the same. I'll make you the same. Can you make that flesh and blood again? You're hurting me, Eddie. got anything from me when you were mean, honey. Be nice. You can be real nice when you want to. Get those girls out of here. And don't forget, he's got to go out of that window. Come on. All right, get that noose around his neck and don't let go. Let him in. Freeway and Avenue 64. Officers on approach freeway. Cars 92 and 135. Intersection Eagle, Rockland Fletcher. That area is locked tight. Section 226, 23 officers, house to house. Section 42, clear. Section 72, 19 officers, house to house. Cars 12 and 144 to Golden Gate and Riverside. Police covering area. You got that one there? Yeah, how's it going? That is the drum chief. He'll never get out of the city. Reserves and specials are recording. Cars 84 and 28 to Western and Franklin, area block type. See for yourself. see the effect of exposure to element X on these animals. Not very pretty. The effect is even more startling in the monkeys after 24 hours. The contaminating effect of element X on human tissue is bound to be the same. 
And I think Eddie Candell will react in the same basic manner as these animals. Dr. Meagher, would such deformities be confined to Candell's physical makeup? Or would they extend to his brain, his mind as well? In my opinion, yes. The ugly, twisted things that made him a gangster, rising up, taking control, growing out of all proportion. Unless something is done for him within 48 hours, the mutation in his body will make him a deadly, contaminating menace to all with whom he comes in contact. But hasn't Candell already exposed everyone he has contacted? Oh, we don't know. If Eddie Candell is not apprehended within 48 hours and placed in scientific isolation, he must be destroyed. <laughs> This is why you brought me here. To horrify me into betraying it. Oh, my dear young lady, we had no thought of doing that. You. You gave a very convincing performance, Dr. Meeker. All of you did. My congratulations. Wait a minute. I'm sick of you running away from the truth. Whatever Candell was, a hood or a knight in shining armor, he's not the same now. Can't you understand that? He's a killer. A monster killer. Look, do you want innocent people to die? All because you refuse to believe what you see, what you know? They, they look like somebody squashed them. I've been thinking all the way from the morgue. Maybe I'm next. Any place, any time. This guy can get you. He's not human. Why don't I... you shut up? Cops, the lousy, stinking cops. Why don't they catch the guy? That's what they're paid for. Yeah, well, you don't want the cops to get him as long as he has Linda. If she talks, she'll give us all the gas chamber. Oh, what are we supposed to do, drop dead? Very funny, very humorous. All right, so we get Candell. How? What do you do to a guy you can't kill? Not with a gun, maybe, but... You got some way of stopping him? Somebody's covering for him. And that's got to be Carla Angelo. Got to get to her. Get to her. I'd like to get my hands on that little doll. The cops, they got to cover it like a blanket. She's a nice at the center of the hotel with a 24-hour stakeout. Now listen to me. In order for her to help Candell, she's got to shake the cops first. And when she does, we'll be ready for her, huh? Keep a tail on her. Right. Come on, little boy. Looks okay. You keep your eye on the road. Take a walk. You sure you don't need any help, boss? I'm sure. Beat it. You got things all wrong, Carla. You got me all wrong. You know, the boys wanted to bring you up here and get rough with you, but not me. <laughs> I said, now, there's a girl with brains. I said, she's smart. She wants something. What do you want, Carla? Oh, come on now. Everybody wants something. Everybody has a price. All I want you to do is tell me what your price is for Eddie's. You disappoint me, Carla. You know, I figured you were a girl with brains. I guess I made a mistake, huh? Now, you listen to me. You listen to me. I can get rough with you if I have to. Where's Eddie? Let me go! Why, you little wildcat, you...
What's this all about? What are you two doing up here? Just looking at the view. Is there a law against that? Maybe. You alone? Well, now, there's a buddy of ours in the car with his girlfriend. We figured we'd take the little walk. Give him a little privacy. You know what I mean. You're sure they're friends of yours? Sure. What else? I tell you, they're friends. Hey, Danny. Yeah, just a minute. Remember what I said. Not one word. <laughs> yeah? Where's Danny? There's something I can do for you, officer? You guys ought to have better sense than to park up here at night. Don't you know you might get stuck up? <laughs> I guess you're right. You got some identification? Hey, the car's rolling away. Guess your friend got tired of waiting. I guess she got a little embarrassed. You want me to catch her? Oh, uh, uh, no, no. No, it's perfectly all right. Say, can we hitch a ride back to town with you? Right. Sure, get in the back. When's Davis going to see us? Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. Not now, huh? Not nah, just a minute. When a convicted murderer breaks loose and kills three more victims, the police just can't hide their heads in the sand. Somebody's going to make a statement to the papers, and soon. So you guys want a statement, huh? That's right. All right, I'll give you one. I happen to be a hard-working cop trying to do his job, not a public relations character. And neither is Captain Davis. Now, get out of my way. Mail me, please. <laughs> what, what happened to you, Hood? Who did this to you? Today, when you said those things about Eddie... I only spoke the truth. But even if it is the truth, there must be something you can do to help him, to save him. There's always hope. Well, will you try? I mean, will you really try just for Eddie, not the police? My dear Miss Angelo, my interest in Chandel has nothing to do with the police. Will you go with me to see him? To see Candell? You know where he is? Well? I'm trusting you, Dr. Nick. I know him, Doctor. He's not like they say. And now he's sick. Eddie! It's Carl, Eddie! I told you, don't come back. Oh, Eddie, please. Please, Eddie. Eddie? Don't turn on the light! All right, Eddie, all right. But, but please let the doctor. No. No, Doctor. I understand, but I only want to help you. You have to trust me. We must understand what's happening to you, and then do our utmost, all in our power, to cure you. Cure? Cure me? Is there such a word for what I've become? You know what I've become? How I think, how I feel? I only hate. Yes, Carla, sometimes I hate even you. If you were to see me now, I... I'd kill you. Carla Angelou is your friend, Eddie. I think she's proven that. I want to be your friend, too. Won't you let me prove it? You 
say you can help me? Can you remake me? I want to be human. Can you make this human? Look. I feel nothing. Nothing. I'm not flesh anymore. I'm steel. You understand? Steel! I want to be flesh again. To feel. I want to feel. I want to die. I don't even know if I can die. I'll do all that I can, all that the best men in my field can do, all science can do. Eddie, I love you, Eddie, for my sake, but... You say you love me. Well, love me now. <laughs> I've always loved you. All right, Doctor. You have your guinea pig. Thanks. Ask Carla to pray for both of us. All arrangements will be made through Washington. I'll phone instructions within the hour. Another couple of minutes, not ahead of talking. Well, I blame yourself. She stole the car. Oh, shut up. I just located the car. Yeah, where? Well, this afternoon, just before we grabbed her, the cops took her to see that egghead, Dr. Meeker, at the university lab. Tonight, I find our car parked in front of his joint. Looks like she picked him up and went someplace. Yeah, that may be our lead, Dr. Meeker. Pick him up and bring him to our power plant at the brewery. Get out. Come on, come on. Come on, get over here. This plate is wired to the negative side. Somebody comes, steps on this plate, touches the wire when the switch is closed, and boom! 10,000 volts, you know. I can smell them flying now. Dr. Meeker, I've been expecting you. I want you to do something for me, Doctor. I want you to call Carla Angela. I know you can reach her. I'll not do it. I'll not have anything whatsoever to do with your plans. Oh, come now, Doctor. I want to try to do you a favor. I know you want to reach Candell, and I'm trying to help you do it. As I said before, I won't... Now, you listen to me, Doctor. I do that once more, you may not have any teeth left. Get on the phone. Cassandra. 
Angela. This is Dr. Peter speaking. I, I want you to know I have a gun at my head. I'm trying to be brave. I'll get on with it. Miss Angelo, there's a man named Damon here. It's Candell, Damon. It's Candell. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Candell. Damon here. I got a couple things on my mind. I'm at the powerhouse, the brewery. Wait, Eddie. Hey, wait, they kidnapped the doctor. It's a trap. Operator? I want to trace a call. Yes, sir, this phone just a few minutes ago. No. I see. I had no choice. Damon said, look, no. Damon just called. He wants to meet Eddie. Now, where would Damon want to meet Eddie? I don't know. Maybe the brewery. That's where he killed. He what? Give me the police, please. You finished yet, Edison? Yeah, I'm ready. Do you want to try it? Hey, Frascati. Wait outside. Let me know when he shows. Habs of candle doesn't show up. You're the nervous type. Take it easy. I just don't like waiting. Relax. Look at the doctor. He's all relaxed. <laughs> Electricity, what next? Eddie. I didn't need you alive. I twist your head just to hear your dirty neck snap. Eddie, please, listen to me. There's enough money for both of us. I can get you out of the country. We can start over just the two of us. Yeah, that would be cozy. Like sleeping with a rat. Stay in the car. And don't come out, no matter what happens. He's in there. Three men are already dead, and now he has Damon. And even 10,000 volts of electricity wouldn't kill him. He's more steel than human. Maybe bullets and electricity won't stop him, but gas might. 
Tell them the truth. Break out the gas guns. Brown, you come inside with me. You four men circle the building and look for windows. If I start shooting, cut loose. Doc, you better wait here for Captain Davis. He's on his way. All right, Gandell. Drop that man and come out with your hands up. Not till you hear what he's got to tell you. I got nothing to tell. Come get him, coppers. Gas him out. We had him gassed out, but he gave us a slip. He took my car. Looks like he's headed for the quarry. He's got the women and Damon with him. And if he holds up in there with those people, it'll be a mess. We'd better radio the National Guard for a flamethrower squad, Chief. All right. Nothing else seems to phase him. Now, get me communications. You two get together on a story you gotta tell them. What's the most we can get for perjury is two years. He'll kill us if we don't tell. Shut up, you tell him nothing. Take this car and get out of here. I don't want you around when they come. Eddie. Eddie, if they tell the truth, there won't be anything to worry about. Get in. Well, if you don't talk, I will! Linda! Linda! Squads of four, shotguns, rifles, everything heavy. Till the flamethrowers arrive. Seat for the big show. Eddie, Eddie, please, I got all the money. I'll give it to you, Eddie. You I'll should have thought of that before you shot Linda. I'll tell the cops you didn't do it. Ah! Hey, coppers! What do you want, Kendall? I got a present for you. You want the dirtiest, lousiest killer on us? Let Jamin go. Okay, coppers, he's all yours. No, Eddie! <laughs> Doctor, do you still want to take him alive? All right, spread out and 
and get it. Chloe, wait. Follow me. Get your flamethrowers up there on the mountains. Break up your man. Okay, sir. They could get me. Me, Eddie Kendall! Damon paid. Linda paid. They all pay. Pay you too, Carla. Only one stuck by me. Pay you big. Take care of the girl. We could only get her away from him. I don't think she wants to get away from him. and throw it to the winds. Eddie, wait, please. Listen to me. Dr. Meeker, he can help you. Help me? Nobody's gonna help me. They're gonna come to me on their knees. They'll beg. They're down there. Hear them moving about? Feet away from her. We can blow them to Mars. Cops! Lousy cops! Oh, Eddie. Eddie, please. Let's get Dr. Meeker. You down there! Look at me! I'm Eddie Kandel! Eddie Kandel, do you hear? I'm gonna make you crawl! Crawl! Get your flamethrowers ready. Captain, you can't use flamethrowers with that girl up there. She made her own deal. Winnie, your face has changed. Man, the war. God, there's hope. Eddie, you're bleeding. Hear me, Kendall. We got you surrounded by flamethrowers. In another minute, you'll be a cinder. Give yourself up and bring the girl with you.
in the world of fun. Nothing can stop me. Dust. Nothing but dust. Nature has laws, too. And we can break only so many of them. Something finally stopped you, Eddie.